yo, y'all seen him on the East Side? Is y'all seen him in the movie chat room with me? You seen him on Comic View? You seen him on tour around the states? It's my man hailing from Baltimore. Daryl Brunson! Give it up and up. Show your love. Show your love. How y'all doing? Damn, they ain't giving me no music or nothing. Just, nigga, just bring your ass on out there. Do the best you can do. Now, actually, I have been with my wife for like 15 years, but we only been married for seven. You know, black people, we gonna go together for a while to see if the shit works out. <laughs> and after we got cut a couple times, locked up, finally we looked at each other and said, you know what, we crazy as hell, don't nobody else want us, let's get married, nigga. <laughs> Going through some problems in my relationship at the house, I need y'all to pray for me. I've been my wife so long that she take me for granted, you know. It's like she don't care, she say anything to me now. And she don't care who she said in front of. Like, I be sitting right there on the sofa and she be talking to my kids. You know your daddy ain't shit. <laughs> your daddy ain't shit. <laughs> I'm like, I am right here. How you gonna talk about me and I'm right here? Like, I'm a deadbeat dad. And she be saying crazy stuff to me, man. You know how women, they just, some of after y'all been with a man for a while. The other day she looked at me and said, I love you, but I ain't in love with you. I'm like, what the hell is that? That's like saying I fix you a big breakfast, a tall glass of orange juice, but you can't have none, nigga. She be treating me bad. When we at that point in my relationship where only two things can help you, it's either a tall glass of Hennessy or Jesus. <laughs> No, I'm for real. And she know, I mean, it becomes that to that level in a relationship when it gets like that. You got to be drunk to keep on loving this motherfucker. And she know that I can't get high because I ain't been high in like 12 years. I've been clean. No alcohol, no drugs, or nothing. Thank you. Y'all clapping this nigga like I got a J in the car if you need one, nigga. <laughs> and she know I can't get high. I don't need to smell no weed. I don't need no liquor. We get into a bad argument. Sometimes you just, after the argument, you wish you could just sit down, relax, maybe catch a buzz or whatever. I can't do that. But she gonna come out the room with a big ass J. Talking about, yeah, nigga, you can't have none of this shit, can you? One hit off of this and you be right back on that cocaine, won't ya? So I have two lovely daughters, two teenage daughters, one 14, one 18. Both of them virgins. What the hell is wrong with y'all? Like y'all know my daughters or something. No, both of them are, both of them are virgins. They, well, they tell me they are anyway. And I, I, I mean, I love my daughters to death too because the oldest one actually used this virginity stuff against me. You know, she used it to her advantage. Like the other day we were shopping in the store and she wanted to get some tennis shoes. I said, go on and get you them Adidas right there, baby. She said, daddy, I don't want no Adidas. I want them Jordans right there. I said, you're not getting no damn Jordans. Them tennis cost $185. I don't care if they do come in a briefcase. You can't have them. She said, well, Dad, I can be like the rest of the girls in my class with my ass tossed up in the back of a station wagon somewhere and some niggas is behind me and I can get them Jordans. I said, well, get my baby toupee. Get her the black and the blue. Get, get my baby girl. And don't sit here like y'all judging the, the comedian. Some of y'all just staring like, okay, nigga, that's one good joke from you. <laughs> Didn't they tell you niggas to laugh it up? Y'all getting all cute and bougie and shit. You is not Martin Lawrence, nigga. You is... <laughs> I'm getting older now. And that's one reason why I'm trying to stay in my relationship, because I'm getting older. You know, I'm around that 30-ish. Well, late 30s. Oh, fuck it, I'm about as late as 30s as you can get, God. Oh, I'm 40 years old, what the hell, y'all? <laughs> y'all have church for a nigga, too, when you feel sorry. Well, that's all right, baby, you look good for 40. Look damn good. And that's a trip, too, because that's the age, like, when you young and at the cookout, when you 22, 23, y'all know some of y'all out there now, your aunts don't even tell you you look good and shit when you're 21. They don't say nothing when your titties all perky and you're looking good. They don't say shit. When you get 40 years old, that's when they want to strike up all the attention. How old are you? Tracy is 40 years old. God damn. Come here, y'all. Tracy is 40 years old. Don't she look good? As if your ass should be dead by now. 
Y'all was like, he's still standing. Let him sit down. No, but it's a trip, dude, because I'm battling certain things now that I'm getting older. Certain stuff, gravity starts sitting in. and Like right now, I'm battling my hairline. See, these niggas up the front, right, right, right. See, if I hadn't said nothing, y'all wouldn't have noticed. But now that I said something, all of y'all are staring at me. Yeah, he losing it on the left-hand side a little bit, dog. <laughs> no, it's a trip because now I have to go to the barber shop. And I got to take a map with me to show the barber where he can and cannot go. I'd be like, hey, man, I can take a line in the back and a line on the sides. But when you get right up in here, be real careful, nigga. Don't get the cutting all up in here. And another friend, they get clack, 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 clack. Hey, man, stop. Because I don't want him to take away my drape because I need to save enough hair to take it and drape it over and cover all this shit up right up in here. <laughs> the drape. I hate when I get to the house and can see that they done took away my damn drape. <laughs> Nigga, where is my drape? <laughs> Then I go out that night, and I don't know, I'm trying to fix my stuff up. So I have to get that, uh, you know, that pencil y'all use, the uh, women use for the eye, uh, yeah, eyeliner. I drew me a perfect line, nigga. <laughs> I etched it in all up in here, etched this in here, came on around, you know what I'm saying? And went to the club and got down. But, you know, I hadn't been out in a long time, so you know how you out, and you ain't, if anybody here, you know... You, you ain't been dancing a long time and you got that one dance that you know that you figure they got to be still doing <laughs> so for me it was that one where you just keep going down like this just, that's all I could do all night long and I was dancing with this one girl and I got locked right about here my legs just got hot on me but what kept me motivated it was that everybody was standing around me looking at me just having a good time going look at this nigga here and I was having fun just doing my thing. I got so stuck. This is a true story. I had to literally go to the bathroom like this. <laughs> got in the bathroom, looked in the mirror, and was like, at least they feeling me. I looked in the mirror, come to find out they wasn't looking at me because of how good I was dancing. Apparently, that eyeliner had sweated all down. <laughs> now I'm looking like Michael Jackson on crack. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm working out now, too. Finally. See, when you get older, you start trying to beat death. So now I'm going to the gym. <laughs> and I got my definition is building now. Finally, I got a little chest. I got that dent right here. And got the little shape right here. But you can't see it with the sweater on, but it's there. But even though I'm in shape and I'm kind of built, my left nipple is still pointing down to the ground because of gravity. So I got to tell people, I like put a band-aid on it when I go swimming and tell people I cut myself shaving. <laughs> so I'm trying to deal with the whole age thing. And I, I thank God that I stopped getting high, though. Round of applause if you smoke marijuana every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it amazing how a crackhead will raise their hand anywhere? They don't care if the police is in here. Yes, nigga, I do a little crack every now and then. Now, I had to stop smoking weed, though, y'all. I had to leave it alone. And I'm going to tell you why. Because anybody know that real good chronic, if it's real good, it'll make you do the same thing over and over again if ain't nobody there to stop your ass. Good weed will. Like one time I was driving down the street, going down Crenshaw, and I was on like Crenshaw and 43rd Street. I know I was high because I had nail ladies and lemon hair stuck all to the back of the seat. And a white police officer pulled up next to me. Now, here's a white police officer looking at me, and I'm a black man in white America. I'm so high that the white police officer looked over at me and smiled. Do you know I look right back at his eyes and smile right back at him? And then I just sat there with my heart beating and looking at the light at Crenshaw and 43rd, right? I'm looking at this light. This light is red. I messed around and looked at the light at Crenshaw and 49th Street turned green and ran the freaking red light. <laughs> the police was like, what the hell is wrong with this guy here? <laughs>